Hello everybody, my name is Kira O'Farrell, I'm from Trinity College Dublin. Um, I'm here with my colleagues from Trinity, um, Timothy Savage and Teresa Logan Phelan, um, and our partners for this project who are Marianne O'Connell from IADT and um, Alison Egan from um, Reno Institute of Education, MIE. So today we want to present to you our idea for aligning um, an existing five ECTS um, credit module that Trinity operates for our graduate teaching assistants. Um, the idea is to align it to the national framework, but at the same time to create it in an online version, a blended learning version. It's currently a face-to-face -face module. To do this, we propose that we repurpose and we reuse existing material, both from our 5 ECTS credit module and from other content that we use to support um, postgraduate teaching assistance in Trinity and also beyond. Um, we'll make it into a blended or an online module. One of the things that we really want to achieve with this <coughs> is greater scope and greater sustainability. Um, and the idea is that it will be as flexible as possible. It will be a single pathway if you want to take it as a five ECTS module, or it can be taken as five discrete units, possibly through badges for students who don't want to take a five ECTS module at one time or who want to do it gradually. Um, hopefully it's something which can be of use to people across the sector, not just for Trinity. We want to release it and have it usable for, for, for institutions within the National Forum and beyond. So this is our existing module that I'm talking about. Um, it probably looks very familiar to, to many of you in the room. I know that there are modules across our institutions. Um, ours is called Teaching and Supporting Learning. Um, I won't go through the learning outcomes. Um, but you can see from, from our module that it's very strongly focused on the scholarship of teaching and learning. Um, it's a theory into practice module. We pull together um, our um, teaching assistants to work and learn from each other um, and to begin to think about their journeys as, um, as, as scholars, as teachers, as scholar teachers. They come in very much as students. It's, it's, it's a very much a transitionary phase, I think, for graduate teaching assistants. And they have to begin to not only move into tutorials and, and um, work as demonstrators, but to really begin to think of what it is that they want to achieve as a teacher going forward at the very start of their career. So it's a module which is very much based on, um, on, on critical <laughs> reflection and on the scholarship of learning and teaching and on working on learning um, through conversation with each other as a, as a group of peers. We've had this module since 2009. Um, the feedback has been consistently positive about it. Um, and I think that you can see that they're, they're, they talk about this paradigm shift and they talk about the experiences they get from working in a group and learning from each other and reflecting on their practice. The downside of the current module is that we can only have a certain number of students doing this module at a particular time. And um, because of the emphasis that we place on the scholarship of learning, on them presenting and reflecting with each other as a group, it grew for a stage. Um, at one <coughs> stage, we had 32 hours of, of supported face-to-face -face teaching, and it just wasn't sustainable at that level. So we had to reduce it. There was one year where we quite honestly didn't have the capacity to run it at all. Um, it's back up and running now. It's, um, um, it's, it's, it's positive, but we can only take about 15, maximum 20 students um, at a go um, on it. Um, if you think in Trinity, we have at least 700 graduate teaching assistants in Trinity um, at any given time. Um, we also do some well, what we call just-in-time um, support for our students, for our graduate teaching assistants. So at the beginning of the academic year, we hold some workshops for them. Um, this year, we held two workshops. Uh, we had about 60 places on the workshops. We, we, we made it fairly big. Um, we had 120 for each workshop. So we had 60 on a waiting list for each workshop. Um, but what we really want to do is, is something that's more than just in time teaching. It's not enough just to have one workshop and then go in and become a tutor and that's it. We want this to be about their professional development. We want them to be on the start of a journey. So we really feel that the module has, um, has, has, has great potential, but we're limited by the scope of it at the moment. NUIG also have a, a, a model which is fairly similar in learning outcomes to, to ours. It's, it's, um, theirs is done through Epigeum. 
so we can't have access to that. Um, Michelle has very kindly shared the, the assessments that they're doing with it, but they get about 80 to 100 graduates a year. So that would be hopefully what we would be looking to do if we were to put this online and create the tools for, for it to become a blended learning experience. Okay, so how is it going to align with the PDF? What strategies for consultation are we um, using and what's the student perspective? Well, we're hopefully going to align with the development fa framework across all the phases. Um, we have quite a tight time frame. We're hoping that we will have this developed in time for the next cohort of, of students coming into our universities in, in, in October. So we're very much focusing it um, on this year from January to June when it would be um, ready to go to be developed by our online company. Um, so initially it's very much about gathering the existing content, the materials, not only from our module but from, from elsewhere, um, analyzing it, seeing if there are any <coughs> gaps available we do know from feedback that there has been um, a bit of a gap in terms of, um, in, in terms of the audience. We want it to be obviously a very inclusive module. And at the moment, the focus tends to be on tutors rather than demonstrators. So it's a little bit, we, we'd like to make it a little bit more STEM focused or useful for that audience if, if, if we can. Um, we plan on having um, surveys, focus groups, um, we did a very large scoping project for this module in 2009. We still have a lot of the, um, a, a lot of the data from that, which I looked at. It's still quite topical. So I think that the, the scoping exercise will need to be, um, it don't, we don't have to go back to the very beginning, but we do want to speak with um, existing students, with graduates of our program, with some undergraduate students, um, with staff members. Um, across uh, and all the partners will be able to enable this. Some of us have many uh, teaching assistants, other of us have very few, and other of us have teaching assistants where there isn't, where they're, where they're not actually graduate teaching assistants, but they're working as teaching assistants, so they've done their PhD or they're not doing their PhD. So we need to, we need to tap into all these people who are potential audiences for our module. Okay. Once we, once we have gone through the, the, um, the development phase, the, the scoping phase where we pull together all the material, then we'll begin to, to, to design the learning activities um, and the supports for it, reusing and repurposing and hopefully enhancing the existing material that we have. Um, the idea is that we would align it to the framework and when I looked at the framework and the, the, the domains, the five domains that the framework had, I thought well that aligns very nicely with our module. Um, so what we're hoping to do is to create five discrete units. We have a, a special purpose certificate in academic practice, which um, we can take as a whole. Our academics can take in, 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 in pieces, in short modules, whenever they want to and according to their professional development interests. And it actually works really, really well. So what we thought was that this could be a single pathway, a 5 ECTS module, a blended learning experience, or it could be done in, in discrete units and um, possibly as badges. Uh, and one of the reasons why NUIG have joined us is that they have um, a, a lot of experience in this area in the, in the um, All Aboard project. The idea that each unit would, um, would, would align directly with the current um, domain, so the self, professional identity, professional knowledge and skills, etc., and what we have already fits in very neatly um, with these units. Then we would also design um, templates for each unit so that if this has been rolled out across other institutions, um, they will be able to use the template to see what are the learning outcomes, what learning resources are in there, um, how the learning will support the curricula, how it's going to be inclusive, so that you will have the actual um, online experience, but you will also have a toolkit to accompany that. Again, the, that, that's the domains that we're, that we're moving to. This is the development phase. So uh, the academic developer who's working on this will um, have the materials ready to go to our online learning team, um, hopefully in June. Um, and then this would be how it is developed. Okay, so each unit would have, um, would have a, a, an introductory video, a short introductory video, which would have the learning outcomes. It would consist of some multimedia presentations. Um, some resources, online activities, um, and we would um, be very keen to um, keep the, the scholarship of learning and teaching and to keep the peer 
um, element of, of the module. So that would be done through online discussion boards and um, the, the idea is that we don't want to lose um, the, the, the heart of that. Um, and then the 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 face-to-face -face tutorial, the assessments, and the, um, the the rest of it can be done within the other institutions. So we'll have everything ready to go to the other institutions. How you um, assess it or how it aligns with your your way of doing it may have to go through your own assessment boards. Okay, strategy for consultation. Um, we, as I said, we're going to um, consult with our, with, with our students, with our graduates um, across the program. <coughs> one of the things that, um, one of the, one of the, one of the um, feedback that we received was that the consultation from students could be more thought um, through. Um, and we began to think about how um, we could use our students as more than just um, consultants in this or consultants in the design of the project. Um, how could we bring the student perspective in so we began to think about um, co-creation um, of this of this product, um, and I think this could be very um, exciting. And what we're planning on doing, and we haven't got very far with this um, because it would be part of the, the project itself. But in our current module, we have a cohort who are just finishing. We have another cohort who will be starting in January, and we would like to involve the the, the graduate teaching assistants who are part of that module to actually be involved in the co-design. Of this, of, of this module. It may be that they're involved in some of the design of the resources, in the curriculum design, in some of design, in the design of the assessments. We're not sure yet, we need to think about that. But they, they would be actively involved in this. Um, and then NUIG, who also have, um, have an assessment to do with course design, have said that their um, students on their graduate program can be involved in the, um, in the evaluation of it as part of the assessment of, of, of their program. So that's the plan, is to actually get students as, as co-creators of this. And I think that's a very good opportunity for, um, for, for some scholarships and publications um, which can be co-developed between the students and ourselves as a result of this. So impact to finish off, I think the, you know, some of the impact will be, um, the KPIs will be developed at the, when, when we begin the project. I think the main thing is going to be reach and sustainability. We want to broaden the scope of this project. You know, we have many, um, many teaching assistants who aren't <coughs> getting this opportunity at the moment because we, we don't have the scope. So the evaluation will be very much to do with scope and sustainability, um, but also um, hopefully I'll, we'll learn things from collaboration with, with, with other institutions. Um, we'll be able to align it to our own strategic priorities, um, and hopefully it's something where we can, we can grow from there. Thank you.